mobility is increasingly something you can imagine working at a neighborhood scale. Most neighborhoods don't need Uber, let's be clear. Uber for a global system works for a tiny 1%, if that is my view. Most people don't leave the move around outside the city that they're in. You don't also need it to work in Seattle and Shanghai. It could work just fine in Oakland. So these autonomous shuttles are kind of increasingly interesting, and particularly because the effect they have on streetscapes. You could take 80% of private vehicles off the road if you had a shared autonomous shuttle. This is ETH traffic engineering. So this is leaving aside some minor issues around cultural identity, <laughs> driving, uh, ownership of cars, status symbols, all of that stuff, which are very real, of course. Nonetheless, from a pure kind of transport planning point of view, in terms of getting people around a shared autonomous shuttle, which we might call public transport, um, <laughs> don't need to reinvent the wheel here, basically. It would be very interesting. Now, stuff we have done is then, well, how, does that, how, do you, how do you call that thing? You know, how do you get people into it? So this is a little film we made. Um, it's Anna and my team. That's my old watch. <laughs> um, just saying, you know, she's going from here to there. Uh, maybe she trades off time against money because she could pick a couple of people up on the way if she's okay with sharing. So then she goes outside. But then it turns out you probably need some kind of totem in the streets that might be doing this, but then becomes a bus stop on demand just for a minute or so, because you want it to be as close to where she is as possible. But by making it physical, instead of getting one person into that, excuse the bad acting from my colleagues here, but <laughs> uh, it's not what I pay them for, so, to be clear. But um, You get three people in one vehicle instead of three people in three vehicles. So you need that kind of thing in an urban system, I think. We then work through, well, what would that mean for a streetscape? Streets become more like piazzas or plathas instead of streets, um, which is interesting. How would that feel? So there's this constant flow in an autonomous mobility situation. Ironically, that's the way cities used to be. This is George Street in Sydney in 1906. San Francisco would have looked very similar. They see there's a constant flow of trams there. People are flowing over the streets in all directions. Everything's constantly moving. There's this lovely kind of pattern to the to the movement there. That's the kind of thing we could unlock. And what do streets look like? Well, this is one of our projects, but it was an inspiration for one. This is by the Dutch architects MVRRDV. Is that a street You know, in a, in a neighborhood development where you don't need that number of private vehicles going through? You just need an autonomous shuttle picking people up out the back or bikes and walking. That'll do it. So your streets become gardens in this case. So I call this principle like tech in, city out.